you want to learn how to make a post for your trail camera like this one, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So let's get to it. Good morning and welcome to The Real Outdoors where we talk about camping, backpacking, hiking, hunting, and just the real outdoors. That's what we do here. If you like what we're doing and you're getting some value out of my videos, please click that red subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified when we put out new content. And let's get to the content. So today I'm gonna to talk about how to make one of these. This is a stick with a stake on it, basically. It's a place that you can attach your trail camera to with its tripod attachment. My uncle actually taught me how to make these several years ago. Here's the issue. In Texas, you don't have a lot of options for trees. There's a lot of mesquite out there. There's a lot of bushes, salt cedar, things like that. Not real good trees for putting a trail camera on. And of course, you wanna put the trail camera where the deer are, not where they're not. That doesn't make much sense. And so a lot of times like where the feeder is or where the deer are doesn't have a lot of trees around it. And so that's where this comes in. It gives us the option of putting a trail camera wherever we want to. Another thing I really like about it is that I can tuck this into bushes or trees and really get in close and really camouflage this camera. And I think that's a great benefit too to having something like this as opposed to just strapping the camera to the tree which I know is what it, most people do with their trail cameras, or they'll put it on a feeder. Sometimes feeders have tripod attachments also, uh, but I really like this. It gives you a lot of options. Now, I know that you can go out and buy a manufactured version of this. It usually costs about $30, $25, $30, somewhere in that range. I'm gonna build three of them for my upcoming trip to Texas, and I'm gonna spend about 12 to $15 a piece on them, depending on what materials you get and the quality of materials you get. I also know you could just use like a fence post and then strap your camera to the fence post. I mean, that's a cheaper way to go. It's an easier way to go. And that is an option in things that I've used like that before. I'm not a big fan of the fact that you have to strap it to the post. First, you have to, it's something very small. So it's kind of hard to get the camera on there just right. I like having the tripod attachment on these sticks because then I don't have to have any straps blowing in the wind, distracting or bothering the deer things like that, you know, it's just a camera on a post. And so I love creating these. I actually just love building things anyway. So this gives me an opportunity to do that and benefit my hunting in the process. I'm going to go through the process and show you exactly how I built this, what materials I use, what tools I need, and show you how you can build your own tripod mounts for in the field. First, let's go through the materials you're going to need for your trail camera mount. First, you're going to need a dowel. This is a pre-cut 48 inch dowel. I'm not gonna need much more than 48 inches. In fact, I cut these off to the length I want. This is a one inch dowel. You could go one and a half, two inches, whatever you feel is best. This is what I've found to work best for me is a one inch dowel, 48 inches long. I can only get one out of this. I think if I cut it in half, so then you have a two foot dowel, I think that's just too low to the ground for good trail camera height. But you can play around with how high you want that trail camera to sit on the dowel. Next, you're gonna need a landscape spike. These come in varying lengths too. Really, it just needs to be good enough to get into whatever ground you're wanting to put that post into. You're gonna want these little hose clamps. You can see I've put them on my current post that really just prevents splitting I have them at the top also because you're drilling like that landscape spike in and the tripod mount in on the top so you just want to prevent the splitting over time this will just help it last longer it's definitely not necessary I built them without the hose clamps and they still work just fine I think this will just make it last a little bit longer. You're gonna need some way to mount your tripod mount on the camera to the post. I have here your standard quarter inch by 20 bolt. The quarter inch by 20 threads is what, uh, what tripod mounts mount to. And so you can cut the tip of the end of this off in order to get it in there. 
I also have some T-nuts, which are basically a female version of a tripod mount, which is what I used on this one here. And I'm really not liking the way that wobbles around, so I'm probably gonna switch that out. Next thing you're gonna need is some two-part epoxy. That's what's gonna hold that landscape nail in and the tripod mount on the top. You're also gonna want some camo spray paint. Obviously, these dowels are pretty bright. These hose clamps are nice and shiny. You want to take all of that reflective bright stuff away using some camouflage paint. That's pretty much it for the materials. Let's talk about what tools you're going to need. You're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a straight slot screwdriver for these hose clamps. I use a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill the hole for my tripod mount. I use a 3 8 inch hole drill for the landscape spike in the bottom. Of course, you've got to have your safety glasses because you're also going to be using some sort of cutoff saw. So this is a grinder with a diamond cutting wheel on it. You could use a miter saw with a metal cutting blade on it. You could use a circular saw with a metal cutting blade on it, but you need some way to cut metal. You could even use a hacksaw if you really don't have any of these tools and don't want to buy new tools, you could use a hacksaw. So why do you need that? Well, the main thing is you need it for this landscape spike to cut that head off. And then you'll see when I go through the step-by-step -step process when you do that, but you are going to need some way to cut the head off of this. And if you're using bolts for your tripod mount, you're going to need some way to cut the head off of that nail as well. And so that's where the metal cutoff blade or a hacksaw comes in. Now it's time to get into the nitty gritty of how to build your tripod trail camera mount. First thing you're gonna do is cut your dowel to the length that you want, basically the height you want your camera to sit. So that's just gonna be a straight cut with your saw, cutting that dowel to the length that you need. The next thing you're going to do is drill a hole in the bottom of the dowel for your landscape spike. I really just guess with how deep I want that landscape spike to go into the post and how strong of a connection I want there. And so I just guess at how far in I need to go and drill that hole in the bottom. Of course, then you're going to have to cut the head off of your landscape spike in order to get it in there and have the pointy end coming out the bottom of your post. Now we're going to flip it around to the top side and you're going to need to drill a hole in there for your either your bolt or your T-nut, depending on how you're going to do it. And if you're gonna use a bolt, you're gonna to need to cut the head off of that bolt. So we have everything prepped for putting our hardware in. This is where the epoxy comes in. So to start, you're going to put some epoxy down in that hole in the top. Take the bolt that you've cut the head off of and put that inside. It shouldn't take long for the epoxy to start to set up and hold that bolt in place. You wanna leave enough bolt sticking out of the top of your post for your tripod attachment to work on your trail camera. So you don't wanna get it too far down inside the post, but you also want it far enough in that it's gonna be good, secure, and solid fit when you're all done. And we'll go back to the bottom and the same thing you're going to put epoxy down inside the hole you created for the landscape spike and then of course put the non pointy end into your post and allow that epoxy to set up a little bit so that it stays in place you now have the basics of your tripod trail camera mount built you've got your tripod mount on top you have your spike on the bottom now it's just a matter of doing all the details. I paint it first. I paint the entire post and the landscape spike before I put my hose clamps on. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint the post. You do it how you want. I usually start with a base of green. I try not to cover the whole thing because this light brown is present in a lot of places I hunt, especially in the fall. You get those leaves that have turned brown and look a lot like the color of this post. And then I'll usually do a dark brown or black over the top of the green in order to get a good camouflage pattern on my post. Once that paint and the epoxy dry, that's when I'm gonna come back and put my hose clamps on. I'm gonna put two hose clamps at the bottom because typically that landscape spike goes further inside your post 
than the tripod mount on the top. So I'm gonna put two down there to keep that from splitting. And then I'm going to put one up at the top near the tripod mount to keep that end from splitting. Now I'm gonna come back and just put a nice layer of paint over the hose clamps. Cause like I said, I wanna take that shininess off the hose clamps. I don't have to get too carried away, but I just wanna dull that brightness. Now at that point, you have your trail camera mount built. That's it. Nothing to it. Like I said, it costs about $12 to $15 per post. And you have a ready-made custom post for your trail camera that you can put anywhere, regardless of where the trees are. Hope you got something out of this video. If you did, click that like button and be sure to subscribe to The Real Outdoors for more great outdoors content. And I look forward to seeing you in The Real Outdoors.